listening to Zap Night, a video game review podcast. Join your hosts as we review video games from all systems and all genres. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Zap Night. I'm your host, Danny. And I'm your co-host, Kaylee. Today is episode 72, and we are talking about Untitled Goose. Honk. <laughs> <laughs> we uh we're still playing assassin's creed valhalla that podcast episode is coming hopefully next week or next month not next week that would be crazy no <laughs> next month our next month's podcast episode but as a nice fun little filler we're talking about untitled goose uh me and kaylee sat down and played it it took us what like three hours give or take yeah that sounds about right And it made for a nice chance for us to get together and, you know, sit down and play a game. It's been a while since we've done that. Yeah, it was kind of nice, especially during COVID. I know. (laughs) Well, and I feel like we've kind of gotten a hang of what COVID is and what is causing the transmission and how to detect it. That smaller family get-togethers, I don't feel are as quite as risky it's like a big you know a big family get together where you don't really know the people's history where like you know you know where you've been and i know where i've been and we know that we don't have the symptoms so to get together is a little less risky than you know going to the grocery store unmasked and walmart licking the walls and you know all that fun stuff like we used to do (laughs) <laughs> so, um, Untitled Goose is developed by House House. Never heard of them. I'm pretty House sure it's just a little indie developer. It was originally released for the Mac, Windows, and the Switch in September of 2019. And then it was released on the PS4 and Xbox One the following December. So, you know, within a couple months of each other. And uh, it's recently been released further on physical copies. So I'm pretty sure the PS4 and the Switch and maybe even the Xbox has some physical copies of the game. We got a physical copy of the game on the Switch. So that's the version that we played. Yeah. So (laughs) story-wise, I mean, you're a goose. (laughs) I scored the story. Un- <laughs> it's almost unreasonably high. I gave it a nine out of ten. I want to say, at the very beginning of this of this game, I mean, you're just a goose traveling around. You don't know what you're supposed to be doing. You're just a goose. But at the very beginning, you see bells in this hole, and at the end, it all makes sense, and the story speaks for itself. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, so let me let me talk about the game a little bit before we really dig into the story aspect of it. What little bit there is. Sure. Basically, you are controlling a goose and you're trying to make it through town. There is no clear direction of what you're doing until you get to the very end. But really, your goal is to get from your little nest And you are making your way out and you're making your way to like a little town square and then you find a farmer and it's like you're, you have a checklist of goals to accomplish. And at some point you have completed enough goals that the next area kind of unlocks and Mm -hmm. then you can go through to the next area and do more things. And then you get a new list of items to accomplish. And these items are like, get the farmer's keys and, you know, steal the farmer's hat and just like goofy little things to torment these people of this town. And eventually you make your way all the way through the town. And at the very end, there is a bell inside of a castle, like a little toy castle structure. And you destroy this castle structure and steal the bell at the top of the tower. (laughs) And you make your way all the way back through town to drop the bell off in your little nest. So like it comes back full circle where you're, you're at your nest, you see the bells and then you start making your way through town. You find the bell and you got to make your way back through town to drop off the bell. So in a nutshell, that is the story (laughs) of untitled goose. Now the fun thing that you brought up Kaylee is that there's so much more story going on here than just the goose. Um, For example, 
the farmer really doesn't have too much of a story other than he's just doing his thing and trying to maintain organization in his farm. But he's a gardener. Um, he's just maintaining his garden. The backyards, there's a little bit of a like a struggle where the guy on the right side, he is wanting to keep his yard clear and clean, and the lady on the left side kind of collects garbage. So anytime <laughs> the goose brings a piece of garbage into the guy's side, he will throw it over the fence to the girls to the lady's side. Yep. And I mean, there's just some fun dynamic between that. Like, if you take the vase over to the guy's side, he'll throw it over the fence. But if he throws it over the fence, it'll break. And then she gets mad at him. And all these little things are like distractions for the goose to make more moves, you know? It's kind of a puzzle game, but yeah, like, absolutely. Really easy mode puzzle game. And it, it just, it, it, it makes the whole game, honestly, those little details, especially over like, the place where there, there's a lady holding up a shop and her yeah. shop slips outside and you've got the kid who's kind of a, a nerdy kid who's insecure and scared of the goose and it's just it's cute there's it really a lot of story is, yeah. going on a lot um, of, and, and stuff's connected it's nice yeah and even things that you wouldn't expect to be connected like if you take the farmer's shovel and you take it into the shop the shopkeeper, when the farmer shows up, the shopkeeper will force him to pay for his own yeah. shovel. You know, just like little things that, you know, they, they incorporated in here that just makes it fun. You know, fun to explore, fun to experiment with different yeah. items, moving them around. Really, you can take any item anywhere as long as it fits within the doorways or it fix, fits within inside the cracks that you, makes you get from point a to point b you can drag an item from the very first area which is the um the farmer the gardener you can carry like a carrot all the way through town to the very end scene you know where you can i, right. I don't know what you would do but you could do it you know it is very yeah. fun um so i gave the story an eight out of ten nice Perfect. I wasn't going to score it that high until we talked a little bit before the recording the episode. I mean, there is a lot more story going on here than just the goose getting the bell. You know, it's the I dynamics mean, and the learning bell, the town. What's so cute is, is when you finally get to the bell, it's like, oh my gosh, this all makes so much more sense. And it's just it's this, oh, aha moment. Yeah, it and really I is. That. I didn't even think that that's what we were like. Of course, you would assume because geese are kind of jerks <laughs> that you're you just, just thought, being a tormenting goose. Yeah, yeah. You think that that's all it is, that this game is just to torment the people. But no, the goose had an end goal. He wanted that <laughs> bell. <laughs> No, it was it was pretty cute. I liked I liked that. That was that was a nice little I don't know, surprise. <laughs> yeah, it was. A, a twist. I feel yeah. like it was a bit of a twist. Just you don't you don't really realize it until you get to that castle and there's a bell sitting there and you're like, "Oh." Yeah. <laughs> oh, this makes more sense now. So, let's move on to graphics. <laughs> um, I gave it a 7 out of 10. I gave it an 8 out of 10. It's Really simplistic graphics, but it's done in this fun artistic style. You know what I mean? Like I it's not it. dumbed down graphics for the sake of lack of effort. It's simplistic That's graphics for the sake of artistic. It's very minimalistic. And that's you know, for the type of game it is, and for like even the music, it just, everything just kind of matches up with just this minimalistic, easy, easy kind of game. It's just, I don't know. It's nice. It's in the details. Yes, you know, the, I agree. The carrot looks like a carrot. Even like <laughs> when the goose is in the water and you quack down that little pipe, it'll echo. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's more cute. music and sound effects, but it's in those details. You know, that's that's the fun of this game is finding these little details that just changes everything. We have so many, there's so many things too, which of course makes sense because that's the point of the game is you're moving stuff around. But it's a lot of little things and things that make sense and things that like the bows. You can wear the bows. That's super cute. Yep. There's 
like stuff in the garbage and just these little details and they look like the things that they're supposed to be. I thought the the vegetable garden was really cute. Like the the cabbage. I thought that was the lettuce, excuse me. It looked like lettuce. <laughs> yeah. Yep, it really did. It was cute. It, it it all was really stinking cute. I I loved I loved this game actually. <laughs> and yeah, the graphics were really cute. Your second player is oh, yeah. also a goose. And you wouldn't think that you could do much to customize a goose, but your goose is different than the initial goose. <laughs> yeah, the normal goose is just I don't even know how to explain it. I don't know goose terminology. Well, but like the normal goose it just has a normal bill. And then the like second player goose has like a humped bill. Yeah. So like you can there's tell a difference. Obvious difference. There's well, a I mean there's a, a color, color difference. difference too, but Yeah. But yeah, it was cute. So gameplay. Um, this is where we'll kind of go into more detail of what you're doing in the game. And you definitely see that um, the puzzle element, but it's really like puzzle stealth where you're given this list of items to accomplish, but there is no direct, how do I do this? Really, your goal is to observe your subjects and manipulate the environment to um, see how that impacts the subject. So like with the farmer, if you steal the carrot, he will chase after you until he gets the carrot back. But you know, if he picks up the carrot, you have a chance to grab his hat and then he'll focus on the hat and just like little things like that. And playing with how, how the characters interact with these items as you move them around. It's Mm -hmm. just, you have to figure that out and you have to, you know, manipulate these people to accomplish these goals so that you can move on to the next area. Yeah. Um, I, the only thing that I really had a complaint about was in this, maybe is a me thing. Maybe it's a switch thing, but I feel like (laughs) the buttons could have been placed a little bit better. As far as, like, I was constantly honking instead of picking stuff up. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you're talking about. I I feel like they wanted to keep the controls simple. And I think that's a simple, like, misuse of buttons. Because they're very clear with what button does what. It's like, there's a button for ducking, there's a button for honking, there's a button for picking stuff up. But, if you aren't crouched, or if you're not looking in the right direction, or, you know, when you're trying to pick something up, you might do a different action. And I think that that does play into it a little bit. But, I feel like by the end of it, we kind of had the hang of what we were doing. Yeah, It's not as bad as Bee Simulator when it comes to controls. Oh my gosh, no, yeah, that's... (laughs) This is a game that yeah, you could eventually you eventually get used to the controls and it's it's not they're not terrible. I mean, I still gave it a 7 out of 10. It no problem with it. It just it takes a little bit of a learning curve, I suppose. I gave it an 8 out of 10. I really just enjoyed um I I really just enjoyed tormenting the people. Yeah, it was and a lot like of fun. just figuring stuff out, and that that puzzle is my kind of puzzle, like observing and manipulating, and you know, figuring well, no, out what it, does what. You know, it wasn't too hard. Like right. it wasn't too like I would have never thought of that. Like eventually we figured it out, and it's, I think they give you enough hints. Yeah, like you know. Your your goal is to cut the flower, but like you got to figure out what what actions trigger certain things so that you have a pair of shears next to the flower. You know what I mean? Right. And to that, that's really the puzzle aspect where the stealth aspect comes in where you're trying to take, you know, something away from somebody, but they will chase you down unless you're quiet about it. So like you have to move something that you don't care so much about. So that they go and pick that up right. But while they're going and picking that up. You need to sneak around the corner and grab keys or whatever else and run off with them to go Very to the next area or whatever you're doing. <laughs> Just like a yeah. goose would. <laughs> Just like it, it, there is. Some, it's like, 
And not that I've had very much experience with geese, but this seems like a very goose thing to have happen. <laughs> <laughs> geese are mean, man. Yeah, we've we've been chased before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> Honk. <laughs> so yeah, seven out of ten. Yeah, I, I give it an eight out of ten. Yeah, that seems fair. Respect. Um, He's what was like, your favorite area? Oh, um. I really loved the miniature town. Yeah. That was so cute. I wish we could have gone to the castle. Yeah. I'm kind of sad that that wasn't part of the game. Unless it is, like, after you unlock everything or something. I don't know, but... You know, it seems like the whole map is fairly big, but, like, it also feels like there could definitely be more added on later. Should they so desire? I would be <laughs> you know I mean? totally down for like an Untitled Goose 2 or yeah, DLC well, or something to expand on the world. Yeah, that would be nice. Just, I, I, love that. I really liked the puzzles and I really liked the gameplay and I feel like if they were to add more to it, because really, I mean, like we said at the beginning, we got through this game in three hours Give me more. Like, I want to yeah. play this game for, you know, 12 to 20 hours. You know, I want more puzzles. I want more experience. I want well, more. Well, I mean, it helped that there was two of us playing as well. So that might be part. Like, I think if it, w- it was just myself sitting down, this would take me more than three. Of course, I wouldn't be I playing so. it straight for three hours. Hmm. I don't know. But I, I mean, think, it's, I think I would have been able to get through it pretty quick. It's probably not meant to be. <laughs> That's well, you've also got a handful of extra stuff to do, too. Yeah. So, like, after you finish your checklists and you unlock the next area and you kind of make your way to the end, then you unlock more stuff to do and more stuff to do and then stuff that you have to do within, like, a certain amount of time and, you know, go through and challenging right. yourself to do these items, you know, quickly or whatever the case may be. I don't know. It adds to the experience we, for sure. We got pretty close to 100%ing it. We got pretty far. I'd say we got about mm, 75%. We got pretty close. Yeah. In my opinion. We, it was really late. I think if it wasn't so late in the day, we probably would have 100 percent it. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Mainly because... It was so much fun. It was fun, yeah. It was, it was yeah. a lot of fun to just sit and do your thing that you didn't really want to stop. But, like, it didn't feel like it needed a second day of play, yep. you know? Yep. This was, yeah. It's a sweet little game. It was perfect for what we were trying to do. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad we played this. This was... And I could see <laughs> where, like, maybe people younger than us would maybe sit down with this, like, an hour or so a day. Or, you know, spread it out and try and really learn the details of every area and perfecting it might be a little more fun. I don't know. But I mean, as is, we had a good time playing the game. (laughs) Yeah, it was, it was definitely cute. So let's move on to music. I gave it a seven. I also gave it a seven. I can't say that I remember much of the music. I do know that as I was playing it, it, wasn't annoying in any way but i it also like went with the atmosphere of the the game yeah you know with those simplistic graphics i was you know it's funny i was thinking about like finally it clicked when we were talking about graphics the music goes perfectly with this style of game like if if I was just going through this little garden, this would be the music that I would be playing. It's just, it's got, it definitely fits the game. I can't recall it exactly, but it's one of the, it's the kind of music that just, it's not so much that it needs to be memorable. It just helps set the atmosphere. Sure. There was a moment when we were playing and something goofy was happening and the goofiness matched up with the music perfectly. Do you remember this? Well, and I think you be- saved it on your switch. You're thinking about when the lady was freaking out. I think so. I don't I know. I think what happens is 
when you're spotted or someone has called to attention over something, the music kind of paces up because you're like, if you're being chased or something is being changed that you had specifically moved, like the music has this pace up or maybe even a different music plays. And I think when the, cause we had put something down that made the lady get stuck and she just sat there and progressively started freaking out and the music, the longer it goes, the quicker it goes. So just as this fast paced. Yeah. I guess that's where I was going with this is that it seems like the music is almost manipulated by the goose also. It definitely has some triggers, yeah. Like when the goose, like you said, when the goose gets spotted, you have a sound effect that plays, but then the music starts picking up the faster you get chased. And the closer that that, that person who's chasing yeah. you gets closer to the goose, the faster pace the music gets. And I think that that's what we were going with, with this, this lady who was stuck, she was moving and it, and it was like timed perfect with the music. So it was almost like her movements were influencing the music to the game mm-hmm. too. Yeah. And I mean, in the clip that, in the clip that you saved, I totally, that's what was happening. It seemed it yeah. seemed that way anyway. It was it was matched up too perfect to her f- spazzing out with not being able to move correctly. That it didn't. It's it was too much of a coincidence to just be a coincidence. Yeah, know? yeah. I mean, overall, I I don't remember the music, but I do remember it setting the tone. I think it was appropriate. It was mm-hmm. charming. Well, and then you had the the yeah. sound effects too that went really well. Oh yeah, well. absolutely. The little tippy tappies of his feet. Yeah. <laughs> tip, 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 tip. And then, and I'm, like I had already said, the echo of if you oh, were yeah, to quack really inside cool. the tunnel, it would like echo. Just huh? a silly little detail to put in there that didn't need to be. It was satisfying honking, mm-hmm. like especially when you get mad. Yep. That's what this would do. <laughs> And sometimes yeah, honking would scare, like the little kid, if you were to honk at him, it would scare him. Or the guy who yep. was playing darts, if you were to honk as he throws the dart, he freaks out and messes yes. up the dartboard, you know? So just like little things that influence this environment, as simple as the goose honking, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I th- I think 7 out of 10 is perfectly and captures the... And then the bell... The as we were oh, trying yeah, the bell did once, do that, didn't once it? you get the bell, you have to backtrack all the way back through town to make it to your nest to drop the bell off. And the whole way, if you run or if you make too sharp of a turn, the goose will ring the bell. And if he rings the bell in front of someone, that person will chase the goose to get the bell. So Gosh. it adds this level of, you know, complexity to, I need to be really quiet with this bell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yup. That's true. Good game. So yeah. Um, overall, I gave it an eight out of 10. I gave it a nine out of 10. I think um, everyone should at least try it once. Yeah, I agree. Oh, or we, you can watch a gameplay of it, but it it wouldn't be the same. You really want it's to play this game. It's the kind of game that it makes you think, but it's not overly complicated. And it really does leave you wanting more. I think the biggest downfall is that the game is so short. Like, if they were to just include more stuff i i would easily play this game for you know 20 hours you know not not all in one playthrough but you know it would be something that i would look forward to trying to complete and trying to 100 percent you know just simply because the gameplay is so fun yeah yep nine out of ten and it's funny that you know i'm praising the gameplay so much but i only gave it an eight I mean, that's still high. Yeah, it is. But like, I I mean, I would find this frustrating if I was a really little kid. 
But on the other hand, a little kid would be able to play this and still have fun. Honking yeah, and stealing yeah. Just stuff. running around and wreaking havoc we, without really needing to complete the puzzle. We talked Especially about this too. After we unlock everything, you can kind of free roam around yeah. and wreak havoc wherever you want. You don't have we to were, follow any guidelines. We were talking about it when, when we were playing, how we could see ourselves when we were kids how uh, imagining ourselves just go like dragging stuff just all through like, you're completely rearranging everything and just being goofy and you know what i mean like yeah. that's it's a good game to actually it might even be a good game to teach <laughs> maybe teach your kids how to learn controls maybe. yeah that's true yeah um yeah that's i i think this is a very pleasant game I don't think it's too stressful. Like, I mean, it, it can be frustrating at times because you have to time things right, but like to enjoy the game fully, you don't have to be stressed out about it or anything. Yeah, and like even when something goes wrong, like the bell situation at the end of the game, you get the bell and you drop it off or you know if you get the bell and you get caught halfway through you don't have to start all over again just like right. that person picks it up and moves it somewhere that's inconvenient for yeah. you that you just pick it up and keep moving you know it's not it's really not meant to punish you on your you know mistakes you just try again and you do right. it better you know the the only time that the goose really gets in trouble is when you're stealing stuff out of the shop and the lady picks up the broom and starts like brushing yeah. you out of the <laughs> shop with it. And even then you can take the broom and destroy it. So like, it's still a win for the goose. The yes. goose always wins. Goose always wins. <laughs> I just loved his little tippy tappies. Yeah, <laughs> it was cute. Oh, and swimming was really fun too. It was smooth. And he was super fast in the water too. Yeah, it, was, it was very pleasing to <laughs> especially first starting out and getting caught a whole bunch of times just to, to be able to drag something out in the water <laughs> and not have to worry about someone chasing you it's like you get ticked off the that the uh the farmer he he could easily just keep doing stuff or you could take his keys and throw them over the <laughs> yeah. fence and lock him out of his own garden <laughs> <laughs> that really so should have been a that really should have been a a goal. It was <laughs> to lock the farmer in. It wasn't a goal. Yeah, it was, well, no, uh, not in. It was to lock the farmer out. Oh, I see. So wow. essentially, you steal his keys and then you get him outside of his farm and then you lock the you shut the door yeah. with the keys on the <laughs> inside. That that was like one of the first hidden goals That's that right. we accomplished. I was thinking about when you locked him in mm -hmm. to be able to roll those cabbages or the lettuce around. So. And it was silly too, because we rolled all those out and we only needed one. One. <laughs> we would have gone the full mile. I know. And I was prepared too. It would no, have been, we it would have been very daunting oh, no, and no. tedious, but we'd have done it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, shoot, by the end of the game, I was saying it was something that, Something that I would do growing up is I would just go through and take every single item from every single area and take it back to the goose's house. And yeah. like there would be nothing left in the world, just everything at the goose's house yep. <laughs> or that the nest or whatever you want to call it. The pit, the bell pit. It's, yeah. I don't know what that was. I mean, it was just this, like the whole area was like a, a garbage dump. <laughs> yeah, something. kinda, but it, it probably was just stuff that the goose stole. Yeah, he'd been <laughs> messing around with. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. It definitely has left me wanting more of this game. So I hope that they are working on either an Untitled Goose Two or some sort of expansion or something because I want more of this game. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to see another one or something similar. Mm -hmm. Untitled Duck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think ducks are quite as mean. No. What would be just as mean, though? Monkey? <laughs> cheeky, untitled cheeky monkey. I don't know. I'm, I am I would love to see more games like this, though. This is definitely original. Yes. Or if there's any out there, I'm not aware of it. So Yeah, they let actually, us know. 
they actually have a 3D printed untitled goose figure with yeah. the magnet in its beak and you can hang your keys from it. It's Aww. so cool. <laughs> I want one really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I but. just I love all the memes that have stemmed from this game. Yeah. The goose <laughs> carrying the knife. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so funny. It's really funny. Yeah. I'm sad we didn't jump on this when it was really in <laughs> with the kids. <laughs> no, I mean, it's fine. It, it's only a year after the oh, game really? was originally released. But yeah, I feel like the hype has kind of died down now. I remember when this was first released and it was popping up all over the place. And now you don't see it quite as much, but yeah. it's still, uh, I, the hype is well deserved. Yeah. This, <laughs> this, the developer's house and her house house, house nailed house. it. I mean, again, I hope that they make more because I want more of this. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to see a second part. Yep. 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 To just to the other side of the castle. Yeah. <laughs> let, let us go through the castle and do stuff on the other side. Or maybe, or maybe the second player goose could have his own game. And when you're a second player in his game, it's the other goose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be cute. I don't know. Something different. Yeah. It, would be, I, it couldn't be too terribly difficult to, uh, I just do the game again. <laughs> <laughs> just different. change up the puzzles, make it, you know, make I mean, it really, bigger. There was a lot, like they rewarded your curiosity for the most part. Like, yeah, you they did. Really, there was a lot to do. There was some things like there was a, there was a task to have, have another character outside of the, the courtyard area, um, buy back an item yep. or whatever. And, and I talked about this before where you steal something of the farmers uh, from the farmer. And then he walks over to collect it and he has to pay money to get it back. But there were only specific items that you could use. And yeah. I think the first time I tried to use a carrot and it didn't work. So like, you know, that, that kind of ties into some of the frustrating aspects where it's like, if you don't have the right item at the right time, it's not going to yeah. work. But I mean, few and far between, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not perfect, but I mean, if that's all that's wrong, yeah, it's I just mean, trial and error. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. And I think that it, if you pay attention, it makes sense. Like, the item that you're supposed to steal, for example, and, and this kind of plays on the whole the whole game. If you're observant, it it goes very seamless. In this example of stealing the, the spade, you got to steal this shovel spade from the farmer. But if you look at the rest of the items that are laid out in that shop, you can kind of see, okay, there are toys. So, like, the, the toy plane could also go in that shop. Yeah. But then there's also, like, a little rake and a little um, something else. Uh, something else. And it matches that same shovel. So, if you were to grab that shovel and put it up there with the rest of the stuff, it just looks like it belongs in that set. So, then the lady who owns the shop would make the farmer pay for to get that back, you know? Right. Just, if you're yeah. observant enough, you could figure it out without too much of a problem. I mean, we didn't have to look anything up, so that's true. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We did pretty darn good. We sure did. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, it's definitely a good game. Yep, yep. I did well worth well worth worth the money. <laughs> I gave it a thirty-eight out of fifty. Got a forty out of fifty. So that's pretty a close. Seventy-eight or a seven point eight out of ten. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's a good score for a good game again i i want more come on yeah. give us more <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely would play this a billion times over b simulator well i mean it's only three hours long so you could just play it a billion times yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yep. so this really was a great little game to fill the time while we're still playing assassin's creed um how's brandon coming along on that well, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how he's doing. Yeah. Well, hopefully we don't have to drag it out too long. I feel like, I mean, here it's it's coming on, 
you know, the, the end of January, or the end of December, January 1st. Happy New Year, by the way. I, I We didn't say it. I just realized this is going to be released. Over. I know. It's amazing. Finally. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, you know, we're coming up January 1st. I feel like I'm pretty close to about the halfway point of Assassin's Creed. I don't know if, you know, how much Brandon has been playing it, but I feel like if you just focus on the storyline, it's not too bad. It progresses pretty fast. The problem that I'm having is that it's so easy to get sidetracked on all the other stuff you can do. (laughs) So that's my struggle in the game is keeping myself focused on the storyline. But I I feel like the end of uh, the end of January is a good goal to me. Well, so, we'll see. Keep pushing. Yep, absolutely. So, guys, thank you all so much for listening to this episode of Zap Night. Um, our next podcast episode will be January 1st. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, that's today. Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be February 1st. That's our next review episode. We also have Zap Chats every 15th. Uh, where we just kind of talk about whatever. Our last pod, or our last Zap Chats episode was in December fifteenth, and that was on our year review of twenty twenty. All the stuff podcast wise that we've been doing and working on, and numbers, and I don't know. It may not be your thing, but I, it's fun to just ramble more than anything else for change. So, um. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for listening, and we'll catch you guys next time. Bye.